guys welcome back to the channel so once again I'm going to be installing the stealth hitch there's a box just came in on Thursday um, I had planned to go to the track actually on Friday I was gonna take the M but unfortunately I needed a few things I needed I was way behind work has gotten me busy I mean, you guys have seen it with the videos I kind of dropped off temporarily it was just with work and they needed a few things before this car was ready for the track. Need to say I canceled my track day. Say I'll do it another time. The track will always be there. But I want to get the hitch installed on the F85. Um, if you see my video, I'll put the little link up here. I did that on the F15 X5. Um, stall went pretty smooth. Just took me a while because I was just taking my time with it. All right, like always, first thing I do is get the car backed out. I choose to do it on the ramps just because when I am underneath it it'll be easier access. Alright, so let's get started. Last time it took me, I started around this time, around 10 o'clock, and I finished closer to 7 p.m. It could have been like 5 30, 6 o'clock. I'm hoping that I actually can do it in this two and a half hour installation time since it's my second time around. Then here's my total cost. I um, ordered it. Obviously, the active harness. It costs a little bit more, but if you want to be a seamless transition with your wiring, if you want it to work with a lot of the different uh, features, like your coating, um, like I said, you get the car to code it for a trailer, you can keep all those features, um, such as the sway control. Um, and I believe when you are towing I think it changes, I think it has like a tow mode. I'm not sure what changes with it. I'll have to research that. But there's a few other things with that too, as far as once you're connected with the harness, it disables the rear parking sensors. Um, you get the zoom features with the camera. So uh, let's see. So we'll get started with it. I'm gonna check, make sure I have everything. Now I know I get more clips um, with these in two different boxes. So we'll check that out, see what's in this box. Gives me a new cable for coating. You get your seven pin wire harness and you get your seven to four pin conversion. What this conversion means, if you, this is an RV style conversion. This is seven pin, you have obviously a turn, brake. Um, for a seven pin, I think there's a turn brake, there's one for charging. For if you turn it to an RV, one, one pin could be for charging it. And another pin could be for um, backup. You have reverse lights on your trailer. One could be reverse lights. I'm not sure exactly what all of them are do, but that's typically what an RV. And also you have one for your trailer brakes. So if you're braking with a trailer, if your trailer brakes either wireless or wired, one of them is gonna be for your brake lights for the trailer brakes. A four pin is just gonna be 
obviously a tail light, um, left turn, right turn, or say I think there's one's bright light, tail light, left turn, turn signal, right turn signal, and then you have your ground. That's it. As of right now, BMW, at least for the F chassis, they don't have a trailer brake controller. I researched it. I tried to find one with my old uh, F15. I tried hard to find one because I was going to tow an RV. Couldn't find one. Ended up buying a Kurt Echo. So this is the Kurt Echo. And what this one does, you have your desisting harness. Hey, like this is already attached to the vehicle. If you plug this in to your seven harness, and now when you're plugging trailer height lights in, your trailer lights should go through here. So what's gonna happen is you almost have like a little piggyback off this. And this is your trailer lights. Once you're connected, you have an app on your phone and your app controls everything. So the reason the Bluetooth loses the connection, it will re re remember the same program settings that you had set for. Okay, everything goes according to plan. We're starting at 10.30. If it's two and a half hours, I should be done around one o'clock. That'd be great. I would love that. Guys, it's gonna be hot today. So make sure you have, you hydrate, keep yourself water. I wanna be uh, drinking maybe two of these 40 ounce throughout the day. So, here we go. Step one, remove these panels. Remove these bolts here, eight millimeter. drop these so yeah, I'm gonna set them right in here right in there Let's go to the other side next unplug harness side Push the screws a little bit from the inside. You can pop it out. From here, I want to remove the eight millimeter uh, bolt on this one. as well as the other side. Okay, now that it's done, I'm gonna drill. And it says remove the three most rear plastic rivets inside the rear wells. So looking through here, it seems like one, two, three or maybe here I think one two three I'll try this one should be exactly the same I'm gonna drill into these and I could pull this liner back all right it's first time using the drill I'm not sure how they expect me to do that drill into that center there's no possible way I can get a good angle in here
like a little tool to press this down you can to pop these loose but that was a little bit of a challenge to get that off now i want to wrap it with tape because now it's going to be vibrating against the paint Very loose, it feels loose to me. Yeah, it's loose, it wasn't seem to be very tight. What if this car has a hitch on it? I should have checked that first. Okay. Great, no hitch. I was like wondering, I was like, you know, what if someone already saw the stealth hitch and I didn't check it? I'm gonna screw this one. Okay, I'm gonna figure this out because on my last one, um, I took these reflectors out and there's a screw right behind here. I don't see it. push down in these clips. Without that second hand, I'll need help making sure I don't drop the bumper. And then, so for anything, I would just start from this side because if that side drops, these have this one in your hand. This is where the PDC plugs into on the right side. Good morning. So this is why important to have a partner. But it says right here, put fascia on or fascia on the pad or blanket to prevent damage or scratches. Well, while I was in the process of doing that, 
I didn't notice half the bumper twisted and touched the ground. So now what I ended up with is scratches right here and one little one right there. I cannot believe this. This is my fault. My fault totally. I try to get ahead of myself. I knew I didn't read that instruction. I was just like, you know what? This is the next step. Let's do it. Come here. What? You're having a nervous breakdown. You're having a nervous breakdown. I'm an idiot. I, it's my fault. I can only blame myself. So guys, as a warning to you, even if you're just starting to take the bumper off, put a blanket, put the cardboard, something. Um, this one did not come off as easy as they did on the F-15. So now this bumper is scratched pretty bad. I don't know if I can prepare this. Remove these four clips, one, two, three, four, for this little bumper bracket. Speed up the process, use this driver. Move these pieces on the passenger side. Don't know what this was. On the passenger side, you want to take this off. All right. You want to keep these. What you're end up doing is you're going to trim just a little bit off. Trim this piece. I just have a standard knife. It doesn't take any fancy, just take a quarter off. All right, next I'm gonna move these deep 18 millimeter uh, these are deep sockets, so take these off. Last time I was doing it myself, nice to have a impact driver for this. Speeds up the process. Now all that's left is to install the stealth beam in this place. This way, oh, take a lot. Hi Joshua. Hi. So I connect the trailer to it. Exactly. Next what we're doing is installing this bracket. This is gonna be torqued down to ninety foot pounds obviously this is where your trailer connector is going to go into this is why this is a very solid piece of metal that's going to connect right in there 
but it's torqued so much actually more than the bracket here because this is what is going to be supporting be holding the weight the tongue weight and screw it back it in. And I can attach this one. Next, reinstall this piece, both sides. What you want to do is line up your bolts first. Click that down. Next, we're gonna start the reassembly process. And then we'll go into the wiring. Okay, now I gotta remove these three rivets. One, two, three. save these so now what's next remove the grommet and discard I'll place the harness to the passenger side this is a grommet I think he wants me to remove <sighs> unravel your harness if you went with the uh, active harness Before we get into splicing our wiring into the new harness I couldn't figure out said, why couldn't they just connect it for me why do I have to do this part but however looking back on it there's no way I could feed this through that little grommet or vice versa so there's the only way that you can get the cables through effectively so let's get started first thing we do is use a screwdriver Phillips head and I wanted to remove these uh, two screws here. Just do some pliers, pull that out. Now I can mount to the bracket.
get you a diagram which wires go where. All right, now that that's done, make sure you double check because if it says brown, it's green. If it says green, it's for brown. Get it back in the block and then you can put your screws back in. Now I gotta find the CAN bus connector. Is this it? What is this going to? There it is. It's right there. You see that? It's wrapped around that. There's my campus right there. So now with that being found, I can plug this in like this. Can bus to the black and green wire. Now that's plugged in. It says behind the fuse panel is a 26 pin connector. Unclip and lock clip, then push forward to release the connector. So to get in here, I need a Torx 30. All right, so I drop the fuse panel down like this. It says there is a connector. So it's right here. Remove that. All right, it says use a pick to remove this out of here. This part, you wanna kinda of separate the edges and you slide this right out of there. I'm going to insert yellow red wire to the slot. And like I said, if you had trouble for this part, I just have to slowly kinda of break away the edges and then that slid right out. Okay, yellow and red wire goes to slot eight. When you look at this connector, you'll see number one, you'll see a 13. You should count down across one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight doesn't have anything. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So yellow and red goes to eight. Plug that in accordingly. All you're gonna do is slide that in there. It's hard to do this with one hand. Uh, this little lip goes up. So you just slide that in there like that. Okay, a little click tells me it's in. Then the brown goes to 21. So as you see right now, I max that on 13. Turn it over 14 to 25. So 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Makes it easier because there's a gap already there. Okay, you want to keep going. There's a really soft click you can hear. And that's it. Insert 24 pin connector into the control module and lock it with the lock clip. It comes with uh, the harness. You can plug everything in. Everything should fit one way. And we'll get started. So I'll plug that one in. Plug this one in. go into this slot on the left. Okay. Now back 
here, we have more wiring to do. This is where we're going to expose the terminal. So look at it like this. Everything's complete. I can start putting everything back together. Slide this back in. Plug this back in the back. little plastic piece and zip tied it up here I wish I can get it up underneath this thing I could have put it more out the way um, but it will require me undoing all of these little clips honestly I don't know if I can get them back in there So looking for my key to put the hitch, I want to check it out. Uh, I think last time they included the key inside the, let's see if it falls out. Yep, perfect. Press a button, you just click it in there, press this in there to lock it. So I got this error, but that's because it hasn't been coded yet. Once I get it coded, I can then, um, that should go away. Hey guys, welcome back. This is the last part of the uh, hitch installation process. 
I don't have a laptop, so this is what I'm making do. Um, let's plug in extension cord. This is your Ethernet, OBD2 Ethernet. And the coder, he's remote coding it right now. So, I'm let him do his thing here. But, I'm not gonna disturb that either. The car's been going through a few different checks here, different things been popping up. But people have asked me, well, how do you get the trailer stuff activated? If you order the active harness from Stealth Hitch, it comes with remote coding through a coder. Um, obviously they're very busy. Uh, it took me a little bit to get to reach him, but after I did, we set an appointment up. So I recommend doing it, just trying to schedule it out um, like a day or two after you plan on installing the hitch, if you can. Um, there are a bunch of files you need to download. Car looks a weird. I guess he's working on the... The only thing I asked for was the Euro um, high beam. But those lights have been doing some weird things here off and on. Different bulb errors inside the car. And ask for the air conditioner to stay on. Everything else I could use on Beamer code. And I can just use Beamer code to fill up the vehicle. Yep, just wait for that part to happen and we're complete. That will get rid of the trailer uh, error and I'll be good. Was it as easy as it looked? No, sir. No, no sir, it wasn't. Lexi being with me, this fly, I'm, I'm so annoyed with you right now.